Hello, I'm JW, and this time I've got another consumer unit to have a look at, and it's this one here. This has been sent in, and uh, this is a fairly old one, and these were fairly common with uh, fuses here, so it's just the uh, rewirable and the cartridge type, but you could also get these uh, plug-in circuit breakers. Now these are fairly uncommon, and if you actually got one of these then you're pretty much stuffed in terms of adding new circuits, because of course these are no longer available. Now here's the item in question, and at the time this would have been considered to be a fairly large unit, so having six separate circuits here. The more common one at the time was just four, and this one is actually labelled, so it's written in pencil here, so we've got the different circuits identified at the top here. And it's a fairly usual set, so a cooker there, ring main socket, so we rest there, all of them for the whole house. Uh, immersion heater, two lots of lights, so upstairs and down, and then also a shower, which again is only on a 30 amp, so that would have probably been a 7 kilowatt, or possibly less. Main switch uh, at the end here, so it's just on and of course off. And these are circuit breakers of the plug-in variety, and these are quite similar to the Wilex ones you could get around the same sort of time. The uh, main difference here though is that the pins on the back here are actually horizontal, and obviously horizontal slots uh, corresponding there, rather than the Wilex which had them vertically. And the uh, fuses you can get to put in here as well, they're just basically the same uh, arrangement here, it just has the two dots on the back in the standard set of colours and you can get those in cartridge fuses and rewirable type as well. And because these of course were much more expensive, the uh, rewirable and the cartridge fuse varieties are far more common. Now these haven't been made for probably a couple of decades, but uh, of course it's one of those that there's quite a lot still out there, although the ones with breakers like this are fairly rare. And unfortunately if you've got one of these you want to actually fit a new circuit in, you can't actually buy these of course anymore. And although you can buy the Wilex ones, of course they won't fit because the pins are the other way round. So unfortunately uh, not any possibility of upgrading this. So let's have a look inside and see how this thing is constructed. Now the front cover just held on with these two screws here. And a lot of these design features are very similar to the Wilex ones, so obviously a certain amount of uh, copying and borrowing of designs was being done there. So uh, just a moulded plastic cover. And so on the inside here it's uh, class BS5486, which uh, was issued in 1979. And this particular unit is going to date from the sort of mid-80s probably, so looking at around 30 years old. And uh, obviously not uh, totally up to date these days, but if you've got one installed then no particular reason why you should change it. So inside there we've got the say plug-in circuit breakers, and on the back here I've just got these uh, plastic shields fixed in place with a single screw, and when you actually bought these things originally then you would have just bought the, basically the empty box and uh, these would have come as part of a single item, so that would be a circuit breaker, and we can get obviously these for the fuses as well which would have been supplied with the fuse as well. And then inside here just got the bottom contact here which comes across from the main switch, and then the top one there, which is where the circuit wiring would be attached. And you'll notice that these are actually fairly loose within the housing, so all that holds it in place is basically the prong of the actual breaker here. And when that's placed over, of course, it gives it a bit of movement so that if these are not perfectly aligned, then it will just sort of slot into place when the actual prong is pushed in there. And so even if this is actually tightened down, it will tighten down onto the wire which would go in, but even when tightened it's still actually a certain amount of movement involved there. Now the others here are of course all the same, and again they just uh, pull out of the holes here. And like the Wilex uh, versions of these, the lower rating, such as this 15, the actual blades here are narrower. So put the two there, this is the 30 here on the right. And you see those blades are considerably wider than the 15 one there. And if you take out the 5 amp version, then uh, again that is considerably narrow again. So you've basically got those three blade widths there. And this was done so that you couldn't put, say, this 30 amp breaker into the 5 amp circuit, because of course that would result in the possible thing being overloaded. It is possible to put, say, the 5 amp one into a 30 amp point, but it's not going to cause a problem, what will happen is it's just, just going to trip as soon as you plug your kettle in or something. So it's just designed so you can't put uh, higher ratings into a 
lower rated position. Now there were probably four ratings of these originally, there may well have been a 20, no, we don't have one of those here, we've only got the 5, 15 and 30, but uh, the 20 amp certainly was available in the fuse version, so you would expect there to have been a 20 amp version of these as well. But again, that's going to be fairly uncommon because we've already got a 15, so the difference between 15 and 20 is fairly small. Now these work in the same way as the Wilex one, so it's basically you press the button in and that will connect inside, so of course the circuit's energised. If it's overloaded or there's a short circuit, then the button will pop out, and you can also release it by pressing the red button at the bottom. And just like the Wilex ones, these have the issue where that button will stick out. So if something's in the cupboard and just sort of brushes against the button, then it can actually turn off half of your circuit, so under the stairs with coats or whatever brushing against that. Now we'll take out the rest of these to see that underneath the actual contacts are all identical. It's purely the plastic piece on the front which has the different size slot there. So you can put any rating in any position you want, it doesn't actually matter. And in this case we've got them in a roughly ordered of size, apart from the shower one at the end which was probably put on at a later date. Now these are the uh, incoming wires here, or where the wires would have gone. Just a single screw to secure those in position, and it's lying here on the left. I just about see the marks in the plastic there, and again neutral on the right. And it's a double pole switch. The line actually comes through and then will come out on this bar along the bottom here, and that goes across to the bottom of all of the circuit breakers. And then the neutral is this copper bar or brass bar here, and again that's just one of those holes for each of the circuits we've got. And again, this is quite close to the line hole here, so have a look from above. Bear in mind you've got your line coming in in this hole. So if you're a bit careless and didn't actually put all of the copper down tied in the tunnel terminal there, then you'd find that there was actually a bit of exposed copper here, very close to the neutral. And bear in mind this is not actually fused on this side other than the incoming supplier's fuse, so that's not a particularly good design there. You would expect it's some kind of a plastic separator or something between the two. On the Wilex ones, the neutral is actually offset over here behind some of the first circuits, so again, that's not uh, ideal or too wonderful, but at least it goes through one of the fuses first. Uh, at the top here, we've got the uh, earthing bar, got the remains of a piece of earth wire actually in there, and again, the earth symbol actually in the plastic there on the top corner. Now, this entire assembly can be removed. And I'll just undo the screw at the end here. And see, it's got a slotted arrangement. And then this one here, you can actually remove completely. And then this entire you know, pan here will just actually lift away. And these are designed this way so that you could actually take this out and then actually put this on the wall empty there. And obviously bring all the cables in through the various holes and things as needed. And then simply fit this on afterwards. Now notice it's got threaded inserts in the plastic here, so again it is designed to be removed and replaced. It doesn't just sort of uh, twist down into the plastic. And on the back here, it's a very simple construction, it's basically just a uh, piece of steel there with the screws at either end. The various items are just uh, basically modules which screw on. So the uh, end here, you'll see these two are actually separate, and that's so that the four-way module or four-way unit would just be the single piece here, and then for the six they've just added an extra piece on the end and made the bus bar along the bottom somewhat longer. This back plate is uh, some kind of bakelite or phenolic resin material, extremely thick, it's probably sort of quarter inch or five millimetres or so in thickness. There's knockouts there which you could uh, carefully break away to bring the cabling in the back, although in this case they actually brought them in at the top, just to remove the holes are there and again the hole in the bottom there, probably where the main wires came in, and these are extremely robust. The only disadvantage of this type of plastic is if you drop it on the floor then it will shatter into thousands of pieces, but uh, nevertheless it's actually very good material, it's very solid and robust, and if you try and burn this then it doesn't. All that happens is it just chars up a little bit and uh, basically smells of horrible old fish. So uh, quite a good material for these, unlike the, uh, or some of the newer ones which have that plastic which has a tendency to melt and discolour, and then the whole lot sort of just collapses in a heap on the floor. 
Here's a closer look at the uh, sort of main assembly here. So uh, switch here on the right, and this is the live bus bar coming along the bottom here. So essentially, it just comes from the switch, and then uh, just a single piece going across to the bottom of all of these terminals here. And you can see the join here between the two pieces of plastic for the four-way version here, and then the six obviously with the two extra added on the end. And uh, screws here, obviously where the shields would fit in, so these just go over the top, a single screw securing it in the middle. And those actually go through the plastic and just go into the back, and then the only screws into the metal are actually just what holds this uh, piece onto the bar. And have a look at some of these terminals here, these are all uh, where the actual circuit breakers connect. And you see that this one at the end is somewhat discoloured and uh, considerably darker than the others, which suggests it may well have been overloaded at some point. That's actually marked up as uh, cooker on the main cover. And again along the top here, these are all fairly similar. There's a little bit of uh, surface corrosion there, but that's not a particular issue. But that one particularly is uh, a notably different colour, so goodness knows what's been happening with that. Normally you'd expect the shower one to be the overloaded one because it's fairly common that people have, say, a 7 kilowatt shower installed. That then breaks and they go to the shops and then buy 9 kilowatt or something and just shove it on the same circuit. And the result being that it overheats and eventually is destroyed. Uh, main switch on this one rated 80 amps, which is plenty for the typical house of the time. And in fact, still plenty for most houses today. This plastic piece here is just the piece that shows through the window on the front there, so off in the up position, and of course on in the down position there. Can be removed. And so these are the screws that would secure the wires, just brass there. And those just come through into the terminals on the back there. And if we undo these, then we should be able to have a look inside the switch. Of course, you wouldn't normally do this, but uh, in this case we can, because of course we're not going to be reusing this piece of equipment. Well, there's certainly a spring in there, so uh, let's see what we have. So that's the back of that piece, so just a couple of springs at the bottom, and then the lever piece in the centre there, which of course just basically a cam which uh, acts against the pieces in the back. Uh, just two screws to fix that, they go straight in the plastic, but of course that's not designed to be removed at any time. And then the uh, switch here itself, so we've got the incoming terminals here, which are solid brass, just with the threaded screw going in, mm -hmm. they just rest in there. Same on uh, both sides, and yeah, this is pretty much identical to the YX version. So here's the neutral, which goes out, just goes straight into that one at the top there, so it's just a riveted or some sort of connection straight into the bar. And then the line over here, again, pretty much the same deal. So it's just the end of the actual bus bar here, which will then just come underneath, and of course continue along the bottom. So it's just two bits of metal, springs in the back here, and then the little buttons on the actual terminals there just act on the front of those. So in the on position, then the spring at the back is actually pressing this against the two terminals there, and then in the off position it's using the springs in the other half, which of course act on the bottom of those, and then the lever here, or the cam piece, will just basically press and push those down so they're no longer connected at this point. So here's the front of the switch there with the lever, and that's just a drop-in component. So in the down position that's actually on, this is flat on the back, so the springs on the actual terminals will just push up against the back of those, and then to switch off, which is uh, in the up position, then these pieces stick out further and then basically press those two bars down so then you've got a gap between the incoming terminal and this piece of metal inside so it's basically pressing down on those and acting against the spring so a uh, fairly simple mechanism but nevertheless one that's extremely reliable and uh, after a bit of effort yes it does actually go back together so uh, 
not a particular problem, just getting all the parts, of course, properly aligned. And then just two screws to secure that in position. And this piece is just a uh, press over the front handle like that. So quite a decent design. And I've got these channels here just to uh, allow when the cables come in the bottom here, just come up and behind into the terminals there. So, so just guide those into position. Inside is marked with the top there in case you uh, didn't notice. And on the back here we can see the part number here which is BX11891 and made in England of course and it's a Mare or Midland electrical manufacturing. And so these weren't as common as the YLX but uh, certainly were reasonably well used certainly in the sort of mid to possibly late 1980s. Although so these were the circuit breakers are certainly the more uncommon variety. So most of these are fine with they have the fuses, either the rewirable or in some cases the cartridge style. And uh, lid uh, just uh, secures with those two screws. And these pieces here you can't actually take out unless the lid is removed. These basically just fit over the centre like that. And when they're actually in position there's a tab on the top here sort of overlap, which when the cover is in place, that actually goes across the top of that, so you can't actually take these out without taking off the entire front cover. So quite a useful safety feature there. Now if you've got one of these in your house it's not uh, dangerous or anything, it's no worse than the day it was fitted. The main problem with these is that you can't get these anymore, and the same really applies to the uh, fuses and the Reliable versions, but uh, these particularly are next to impossible. But you can probably find the fuses or whatever on eBay or somewhere like that. And as with the Wilex ones, the main problem with these is you can't put an RCD or any kind of RCBO in these because you've only got line here, there's no neutral connection in there at all. And the only way you're going to get an RCD in here is to put one on for the entire installation, but of course, that's not actually compliant. So, pretty much, if you want an RCD to add to this system, then you're going to be replacing the entire unit. So that's the uh, Memora 3 consumer unit there with the plug-in circuit breakers and although fairly similar in design to the Wilex ones the main difference there of course is the pins are horizontal so of course there's no way of fitting the uh, Wilex or the sort of GE mini trip or whatever ones in place because of course they have vertical pins so unfortunately if you've got one of those then uh, your choices are searching around the likes of eBay and other dodgy places to find one that fits or unfortunately replacing the entire unit at significant cost. But uh, that's pretty much it for this time and there are pictures of the other Memora 3 ones on the website so links to that are in the description and over the top of this video. But uh, until next time, thanks for watching.